Okay, so the first book on this list is Essentialism by Greg McEwen. This book is about doing less but better. So basically, you probably are doing way too much in your life. You might think that's a good thing, but in fact, it's actually draining your potential. If you were to just focus on one main thing and go all in on that, every single successful person that you can think of does this. They are incredibly focused. And if you want to be successful in your life as well, you need to adopt some essentialism principles. So please give this a read if you want to achieve something big in your life. By the way, I actually put together a free PDF of all of the books that we're going to cover today. So if you really do not want to look at my dumb face, my ugly forehead pimples, or hear my annoying voice, um, click in the description or in the pinned comment. Once again, 100% free. And uh, yeah, check it out. Book number two is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. If you've ever wanted to create anything in your life, music, art, poetry, whatever it might be, read this book. It talks about this thing called resistance. Resistance is always there and it always will be there. And its sole purpose in life is to stop you from doing the things that you wanna do. Stephen talks about what this thing is, how to overcome it, and uh, I think it's a fantastic book if you've ever wanted to create anything in your life. It's really helped me with YouTube. Book number three is Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. This book is amazing. Bourdain is like the coolest dude in the whole world. I don't know if you've ever seen any of his TV. He just had such a swagger about him. Can't believe I used that word. Seriously, um, this book is great. It, it makes you want to go and work in a really, really greasy kitchen and stay up till two in the morning scrubbing the floors. Bourdain has such a passion for food and for the restaurant industry. When you read this, you're gonna to wanna to do exactly what he did in his life and live life a little bit more carefree and find something that you really, really, really love. This book is amazing, it's gonna inspire you. Check it out. Book number four is The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. If you have been rotted away, your brain has been rotted away by TikTok and short form content, this book is the perfect entry level point entry point, gateway drug, if you will, uh, to stoicism. So as you can see, there is a passage for each day of the year, um, and it is a stoic passage from one of the stoic greats, and it's very small, and then Ryan has a very small reflection on it as well. You read it two minutes in the morning, not even 60 seconds in the morning, and then you go on with your life and hopefully apply some of these lessons. It's the perfect way to get into stoicism if you don't want to read a whole book at once or commit to a whole book at once you can just commit to one day the daily stoic good stuff book number five is the psychology of money by morgan housel this book is one of two financial books on this list and these are probably the only two financial books you ever need this and the one that's coming up this book is pretty much breaking down why we decide to do really stupid things with our money um, that we know we shouldn't do we know better, but we do them anyways. This book tells us why. It's the psychology of money, and it's timeless. It truly is timeless. You could give this book to someone 100 years ago, and it would be relevant, and you can give someone this book in 100 years, and I think it would still be relevant. So please read this book. It's fantastic if you're trying to figure out your finances at all, or if you're completely settled with your finances. Still a lot to learn here. Book number six on this list is On Writing by Stephen King. This book is full of practical knowledge for improving your writing, becoming a better writer uh, from one of the best to ever do it. I truly believe that whatever field of work you're in, even if it's not exclusively writing, you will benefit from becoming a better writer. And this book is your way to do that. So on writing, Stephen King, check it out. Book number seven is The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. This book is so good. I read it pretty much in like one or two sittings when I first sat down. It completely changed the way that I look at wealth creation and business in general. Um, I haven't applied all of those <laughs> quite yet, but um, I do think that it set me on the right path. The cool thing about this book is it's free, not the physical copy, but you can read it online for free. And um, it's actually not written by Naval Ravikant, who's like this famous investor. It's written by Eric Jorgensen and he's compiled all of Naval's tweets and podcasts and blogs and all these things, and he's put it into this one super dense, super consumable, super insightful book. Um, this will change your life. Give it a read. Book number nine is Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. This is a little bit more stoicism for you, a little bit more dense than the Daily Stoic, but this book is so good. It was never supposed to be read. He was the Roman emperor, 
Marcus Aurelius was. And this was basically his diary to himself that got leaked to the world. I love this book because there's about 25 million lifetimes worth of knowledge and wisdom in this book. I can't believe how insightful he was. Um, but it's also really great for me to just see how normal um, the minutia of his life was and how humans don't really change that much in the however many years, thousands of years it's been since Marcus Aurelius' time. Um, it also puts in perspective that a Roman emperor was struggling with a lot of the same problems we struggle with on a daily basis. So it's very comforting. I've read this book multiple times. Once again, super crushable. It's just like little passages that you can read. So pick this up. You won't be able to put it down and uh, you'll be a better person because of it. Okay, book nine is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I swear I have it. Hold on. Okay, it turns out I don't own it. But the reason I don't own it is because I listened to the audiobook. Chris Williamson, my boyfriend, uh, absolutely loves this book. He recommends it all the time. It's fantastic. It follows the main character, Darrow, and he's just a badass. If you like underdog stories, underdogs coming out on top in the end, no more spoilers, um, give this book a read. Listen to it on Audible, though. The audiobook is a must, only because I haven't actually read the physical book, but the narration is really good. Check it out. Okay, the next book on this list is Atomic Habits by James Clear. Funny enough, I actually don't own a physical copy of this book, even though I've mentioned it a million times on this channel. It is really one of the best books I've ever read in my entire life. I've read it multiple times. I think that one of the most important skills that you can develop in life is learning how to create and keep habits over a long period of time. If you wanna learn how to do that in any aspect of life, read this book. It is so good, it's so actionable and uh, you'll come away knowing a heck of a lot more about habits than you did when you went in. Okay, book number 11 is 4,000 Weeks by Oliver Berkman. I love this book. I read it during COVID, and it's really just a warm hug for my existential dread of everyday life. Uh, it, it talks about how we can kind of let go of this idea of trying to get everything done because we are mortal beings. We have a limited amount of time on this earth, and instead of trying to get everything done, we instead need to focus on what is really important to us and in our lives. It's kind of like essentialism in that way. Never really realized that until right now, um, but it's amazing. It really lets you let go of all that stress and anxiety that you might have of needing to get everything done. Specifically, I think chapter 13, Cosmic Insignificance Therapy is really, really great. Tim Ferriss bought the rights to that and he released a, audio, a, a podcast episode of the audiobook for that chapter. So check that out. It'll be 100% free and the narration's really good. And that's kind of how I actually came across the book in the first place. So 4,000 weeks, amazing book. Book number 12 is Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. This book actually made me cry. I remember I was on the subway reading it and I started to cry. And um, it's not inherently sad itself. It's more just this story about Phil who has kind of taken this business of selling shoes out of the back of his car and turned it into one of the biggest companies in the entire world nike obviously it's just a beautiful story and at the end of the book phil talks about how he wishes he could go back and do it all again this is after the fact he has billions of dollars in the bank account and he's famous and he's done more than anyone could imagine he wants to go back to when he was first starting out and it makes me realize that if i'm not appreciating the journey now there's no way I'm going to appreciate any sort of success I get in the future. And I think this is like a perfect example of that being true. So amazing book. Give it a read. Okay, the next book on this list is Into Thin Air by John Krauker. I've never known how to pronounce his name. This is his personal account of summoning Everest. Um, it's an unbelievable story. He's such a great writer, uh, but also just the journey they went through is crazy. And... I read this book probably six years ago. I think about this book probably once a month. It was that good. Please read this book. Um, there are stories in here that will haunt you, that will amaze you. I love this book. I actually really, really need to give this a reread. All right, the next book on this list is Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. This book is thick. Look at that thing. It's like 1,079 pages, I think. Oh man, it took me six months to read this thing. It really sucked. It was torturous. 
he writes like half the book in these end notes. Look how fine that print is. He writes half the book back here, right? So you have to, you have to read here and then you have to flip back to the back and then you have to flip back again and then you have to flip back again. It's really annoying, okay? All this to say, I love this book. It was the worst thing ever, but I love it. I cannot stop thinking about it. Maybe because it took me so long to read. It's a bit of like Stockholm syndrome. But I don't know. David Foster Wallace is a genius. This book is... <laughs> I don't really know how to describe this book to you. It's about addiction and entertainment and kind of a take on modern society. I promise you, if you have a couple hundred extra hours, you will not regret reading this book. If you can find the time. <laughs> okay, the next two books on this list are The Martian and Saving Private Ryan. Definitely not Saving Private Ryan. Project Hail Mary, and they're both by Andy Weir. I don't have them because I listen to them on Audible. They are the best audiobooks I've ever heard in my entire life. Make sure Will Wheaton is narrating them, okay? You have to get the Will Wheaton version. I was training for a marathon, and uh, it was the middle of winter in Canada, and so I had to run on the treadmill in my condo, and I just stared at the wall for hours. I had to do like two hour runs sometimes, just stare at the wall. And the only thing that kept me sane during those times was these books. They were hilarious. They were entertaining. I have a very, I hold a very dear place in my heart for them because they got me through those moments. Um, pop them on whenever. They're fun. They're fiction. They're entertaining. They're sci-fi. Good books. 10 out of 10. Can't recommend them enough. Okay, the next book on this list is Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Chris is a former FBI hostage negotiator. And you can imagine why negotiation might be important in his line of work. But he goes on to explain that we negotiate in every aspect of our lives. It doesn't have to be high stakes hostage negotiation. It could be talking to a person or a partner. It could be negotiating a job. It could be trying to land a new client, whatever it is. All these things in our day-to-day -day life um, revolve around negotiation. This book is fantastic. Um, I read it and then I applied the insights in it to a client that day um, through ChatGPT and I ended up getting the client. I'm not saying that's why I got it, but it's super actionable. You can literally read it and then five minutes later apply it. Overall, it's just gonna make you a better communicator, better negotiator, and just a better human being in general. So can't recommend it enough. Never split the difference. Check it out. Okay, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins is the next book. Uh, what can I say about Goggins? The guy is absolutely insane. Um, he's run like 240 mile races. He's broken the world record for pull-ups. He's done uh, the Navy SEALs um, Hell Week three times. The guy's an anomaly. But when you read his story, uh, the guy turned a really, really bad and abusive childhood into one of the most incredible lives I've ever seen lived. And it makes you realize that if he can do it, you can definitely do it. It's a super inspirational book. It's a super motivational book. And um, you will not regret reading it. And you're going to want to go for a run in the rain after you read it. Because you're going to realize you've been being soft. You've been soft your whole life. Goggins is going to harden you up. And not that way. Not the weird way, you creeps. The next book is The Alchemist by Paulo Cole. Cole? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, bit of a cheesy book. But I really like it. It's a short read. It's about pretty much following your dreams. And one philosophy that I truly believe in life is that everything happens for a reason. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. And this book kind of embodies that lesson. It's a really great read. It's short. You could read it in an afternoon. And um, if you're trying to chase your dreams, this book will inspire you to do so. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. I wanted to hate this book for so long. I hated the cover. I thought the little splats were so pretentious. I was like, eh. So I avoided reading it for years after it got released. And eventually I gave in and I really, really liked it. Read it in like two days. Mark, one thing I like about Mark Manson is, is he doesn't write to like most authors do. This whole thing kind of reads like a text message from one of your vulgar, funny friends. He's not trying to write over your head in a pretentious way. He talks directly to you. The insights in here are not new by any means. It's all old information, but it's packaged in a really great way. It's delivered in a really great way. And um, it's helped me a lot in my life. The next book is Anything You Want by Derek Sivers. 
Derek is like the weirdest guy you'll ever meet in your entire life. He is a former musician, programmer, circus clown. Um, he's an entrepreneur. He started a business and he sold it for $22 million and then he gave away all the, the money to charity. He recently completely gave up his uh, American passport and he's living in like New Zealand, I think. The guy's an anomaly, but the book is amazing. It's going to make you completely rethink um, everything with regards to your business. It is customer first. It is doing things that don't scale. It is so much fun to read. Once again, very short, very insightful. Um, you could probably read it in an afternoon and it'll totally change the way that you approach business and life. Derek has this carefree energy about him. I highly recommend you also check out his appearances on the Tim Ferriss podcast. Anything you want. Fantastic book. Okay, the next book on the list is Based on a True Story by Norm MacDonald. Oh, I love Norm. He's one of my favorite comedians. And this book, I was really excited to get it because I thought it was going to be um, a memoir, even though it says not a memoir, I know. I thought it was going to be a memoir. And you get like 10 pages in and um, you realize it's just total nonsense and you can't really figure out what's real and what's fake or you think it's real until Norm says some absurd thing and you're like, of course this isn't real. This is the most Norm thing in the whole world. He literally named it based on a true story, not a memoir. Anyways, um, I love Norm. He is weird. He is funny. There's no one else like him. There will never be anyone else like him. And I miss him a lot. Um, rest in peace, Norm. The next book is Elon Musk by Walter Isaacson. This is, I think Walter Isaacson's newest book at the time that I'm recording this. Um, this is my favorite biography or autobiography by far. Elon is a really interesting guy. Obviously, he's the richest man in the world. And I think the thing that I like most about this book, there's a ton of insights from this book. I made a video about it. I can link it somewhere here. There's tons of things that you can learn and apply in your book, but my favorite thing about this book is that Walter Isaacson does a really great job of humanizing Elon Musk. Regardless of what you think about this guy, at the end of the day, he is a human. He has gone through experiences. He is who he is because of those experiences, and his story is really captivating, really inspiring, and he's also just an absolute genius, so it's really cool to hear what's in his head. Okay, next up is Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman by Richard Feynman. Uh, this book is hilarious. I read it years ago and I don't remember anything specific from it, but I do remember feeling super inspired and genuinely laughing out loud from reading this book, which is, which is rare. Richard Feynman is a Nobel Prize winning physicist. He worked on the Manhattan Project. Um, he's a genius and yet... This book is exactly the opposite of what you'd expect. It's really funny. It's lighthearted. He's super adventurous and curious dude. Um, just a great book. Can't recommend this enough. Okay, the next book on this list is 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. This book has changed my life. One rule specifically, which is to tell the truth. Oh, tell the truth or at least don't lie. And the extension of that rule is act in a way so that you can tell the truth about how you act. This book is full of rules like that, that you could follow very simply, but are not simple to follow. Ultimately, they're going to change your life. I don't know what you think about Jordan Peterson, whether you like him or you hate him. I think everyone should read these books, this and 12 more rules for life. There's going to be one rule in here, probably multiple that are going to blow your mind and completely change the way you live your life. And I just think that if you follow a good chunk of these rules in this book, there's just no way that you don't come out a better person. And I think that's that's a really hard thing to do in a book, and he's done it twice. So check it out. The next book on this list is Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. Um, they're both Navy SEALs. I'm sure you've heard of Jocko Willink before. The guy is maybe the scariest man in the whole world. Um, but this book is really about taking ownership for everything that happens in your life. They talk about it in the context of leadership, but you can do it personally as well. Basically, nothing good happens if you are constantly blaming others or finding some external reason something went wrong. This book basically tells you that if you're leading a team and someone on your team fucks up, that's not their fault. That is your fault. And the quicker that you can own up to that and other mistakes in your life, the better your life's going to be. And I have to agree with them. 
This book is also incredibly well written. They do this thing where they talk about a war story and then they talk about uh, the, the theory and then they, they apply it into their business that they've worked on in real life. So it's super engaging, super easy to read um, and it'll stick with you. Okay, next up, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I know this one has been beaten like a dead horse. It's on every list you could possibly imagine, <clears throat> but it's for good reason. Um, there's such simple advice in here, but it's really, really hard to live up to. Um, some of my favorite advice is literally just like saying people's names, remembering people's names, or um, you know, always allowing people to save face, or uh, talking in terms of the other person's interests. These are things I need to work on constantly. I'm trying to constantly remind myself that I need to work on them. And I find myself coming back to this book every year or so, really just skimming through and trying to reabsorb these ideas. And to be honest with you, I'll probably do that for the rest of my life. So the sooner you read this book, the better. You can start implementing some of these rules. And uh, yeah, fantastic book. The next book up is Cosmos by Carl Sagan. The same reason I loved Kitchen Confidential is the same reason I loved this book. He is so clearly passionate about space. It, it's infectious. You can't help but continue to read it. And to be honest with you, I don't remember anything in this book. I, I genuinely don't remember a single thing. Um, but I do remember how it made me feel. And it's kind of like when you have a conversation with a friend who's way smarter than you and uh, you don't know what they're saying, but you can tell that they're enjoying it. So you just let them talk anyways. And you're happy to let them talk because they're so passionate about it. That's what this book's like. It's, it's going to inspire you probably not to go into astrophysics, but probably to pursue something that you want to pursue. Um, it's, a, it's a great book. I need to actually read this one again. It's been a few years, but uh, Cosmos by Carl Sagan. I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi is the next book on this list. I said that The Psychology of Money was one of two books financially that you would ever need. This is the second book. This is the practical book, the actual fundamentals of the things that you're going to need to know. Um, I learned pretty much everything I know about personal finance from this book. Uh, I think you could do the same. This is probably all you'll ever need to know, if I'm being honest. So pick this up, pick up the psychology of money, and you've mastered money for the most part, in my opinion. Story Worthy by Matthew Dix is the next book on this list. I love this book. It made me realize that telling a good story isn't necessarily about living through some near-death experience or getting lost in the Amazon jungle or whatever it is. Telling a good story is about finding these little five-second moments in your life that completely changed the way that you experience life moving forward. And the cool thing is that these happen every single day. We just don't realize them. So Matthew Dix gives you ways to document those things and then ways to better present those stories as well. It's so cool. I think storytelling is one of the oldest skills that humans have. Um, it goes back hundreds of thousands of years, I'm sure. And uh, being able to tap into that is really important. Storytelling is everywhere in our lives, from the business pitch to communicating with friends to, I don't know, going on a first date or whatever. This book is great. Pick it up. You will not regret it. The next book is The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. This book is old and everyone talks about it. Um, but I love this book. Uh, there's so many actionable insights in this book. Um, there are tons of things that are currently out of date, but there are also a bunch of concepts that are timeless. One concept that I love um, is something called fear setting. And that's this idea of, you know, we often think about our worst fears, but they're very surface level thoughts. Fear setting is this idea of really diving deep into your fears and figuring out what's the actual worst thing that could happen and then working your way back from there taking steps to recover from that bottom rock bottom state that you're at. Um, I read about that exercise. I did that exercise and I read that on Friday and then the Monday morning. So three days later, I quit my job because of that exercise. Um, I got over that fear because of the fear setting thing. So there's tons of other stuff like that in this book. I'm sure something else will captivate you, but um, it's a great book. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise for our work week. The next book on this list is 1984 by George Orwell. I just finished reading this book for the second time and it's terrifying. Um, it's this dystopian book where everything you, you say, you do, you think um, is captured and, and you're, you're free from nothing pretty much. Uh, and this big authoritarian uh, regime um, you know, called the party is run by this guy, the big brother. And 
they control everyone, they control everything, they rewrite history. Um, it, this, this might sound like a bit of a jump, but you, you can kind of draw parallels between this and uh, the, the modern world with regards to social media and these algorithms that kind of control how we think and us just kind of giving away our data to these companies. I know it sounds kind of conspiracy theory of me, but uh, this book will really get you thinking. And at the very least, it's just an unbelievably written story um, that will rock your world, change the way you see everything forever. So <laughs> read it at your own risk, but it's a good one. Okay, the last book on this list is technically not a book. Uh, it's called This Is Water by David Foster Wallace. It's actually a graduation speech, a, a commencement, comm commencement speech that David Foster Wallace gave to Kenyon College in 2005. Um, it's amazing. It's changed my life as much as any of these other books have. It's this idea that when we kind of start to enter the real world, when we become adults, we slowly slip into like autopilot mode and we start to just go through the, the monotonous day to day of life. Um, but it's really important. David Foster Wall says it's probably the most important thing to slip out of that state, to recognize that you're in that state um, and to start living life the way it was meant to be lived. And that's the whole concept of, of when he says this is water, he means that uh, when fish are swimming through water, they don't know they're in water. And when we're going through the day-to-day day li day -day life, when we slipped into autopilot mode, we don't know we're in that mode either. So it's all about just recognizing that this is water. This is our life, and we need to do something about it as soon as possible. Okay, those were some books that changed my life forever. Once again, I have a free PDF with all of those books in them and some nice summaries, and it's all nice looking and stylized. Uh, if you want to get a copy of it, check out the description or the pinned comment below. Once again, it's 100% free and you can have it in your inbox in a second. So check it out. Other than that, thanks for watching. See you guys soon.